All right, we are recording now. Um, so this is uh, Chris Lindenberger with Texas Homeless Network, and uh, this is our second um, Texas SOAR monthly call. And so um, I wanted to um, just uh, start having these calls so that we can share information. Um, right now we only have uh, we have Camille on the line with us, but I'm going to go through uh, the regular you know, uh, pieces that we do with everybody on the line. And then that way, if anybody wants to um, watch this later, since it will be recorded, you can feel free to call me and give back your input. All right, now I have to figure out how to advance slides. Okay, so these calls are going to be really simple, really fast. Um, and there will just be three parts. One is uh, check-in. Part two will be any kind of updates that anybody wants to give around what's happening in their communities. And the third part is just a, a little conversation that we're going to have um, this week or today. We're going to talk just about the kind of the supports that I can give you guys um, and how we can incorporate, how THN can incorporate more supports for the SOAR leads that are out there right now. And then I'll finish up with a couple of um, THN specific updates as well. So um, check-in wise, uh, we're just going to go down the list because uh, I know Camille cannot see the screen. Um, however, uh, we do have um, all the areas that have leads right now. Um, they are all Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, um, Denton, Austin, and of course El Paso. So since Camille is the only one here and she's already checked in with me, um, we will kind of skip that since we already had that conversation. However, in the future with these calls, we will kind of do a check-in. And the check-in really is so that I know you're here, um, not that I can't see that on my screen, but also if you um, if you have any current information you want to share um, that's not necessarily an update. Um, so moving on to the updates, we have um, – if anybody wants to give an update, and I guess Camille, since you're the only one on the line, I will, I might put you on the spot a little bit. Mm -hmm, uh, <laughs> okay. How are um, things How are things going in El Paso? I think they're going they're going okay. Could they be going better? Absolutely. I think that's where I've kind of falling off fallen off my my sore track, if you will. So I think that. Um, I need to get back on that track to try and, and continue the conversations, the trainings, et cetera, so that um, it, so so that SOAR can be more comprehensive than what it is if, than what it is right now. Yeah. So. Now, and you are aware that we um we have we have kind of moved to that quarterly online training. So hopefully, getting the trainings to your individuals in your community should be a little bit easier now. Yeah, yeah. I might I, I and I've seen I've I've seen the emails come in. I just I just like I said I've I've been focusing on other stuff and so I I really need to get back on that track and since it's not necessarily the training's not reliant on myself. Yeah. Um uh, and and it's now on web which I think would be easier and and better. So anyway, so well, that's, that's where I am at. That's great. And what we're actually um, ask, asking the uh, the leads to do um, in that last email I sent out, I sent uh, I had an attachment that had the flyer on it, so you can use yes. that flyer um, and send mm -hmm. that out to your providers in your area, Camille, and so that people know that um, hey, you know, we're going to start up a online group here, um, you know, at, by the end of April, and we're going to get it going, and you have, you know you know, May and June to kind of complete the online training. And the reason for that flyer is just so that we have a little bit organ of more organization around it. Plus, I don't want it to be totally on you guys. Um, so you're just really responsible for sending out the information. And then if anybody has any um, any questions about the online training, uh, just being there for them so that they can answer those questions or so you can answer those questions. Um, and then once the training is done, the idea is to kind of have a, a half-day follow-up behind that. Okay. Now what about um, – okay, well, good. Well, thanks, Camille, for uh, for giving us an update. Um, and then I will actually be contacting um, everybody, all the other leads individually via email or by phone call 
uh, to kind of get updates from them as well, um, especially with uh, them not being present here today. So that way I can follow up with everybody. Um, and then the last piece of our call, um, which will go pretty quick today since it's just the two of us, um, mm -hmm. is how, how can THN um, help you guys, um, help the leads that are out there? You know, how can we help with organizing or providing supports? And so um, before I get your feedback, um, a couple of ways that we've started to, or I've started to implement these, these factors to helping you guys is, uh, first of all, is to um, try to coordinate with, with each one of you individually to, to start steering committees. Um, mm -hmm. And the steering committee really is, should be there to help you decide how the work will happen with SOAR in your community so that it's just not the lead that's having to do all the work. So um, in talking with a couple of other communities, the way we kind of envisioned it is that the steering committee would be comprised of um, the SOAR lead, um, the SSA contact lead that's in your area, and then typically um, VA and maybe MHMR. So it's a small group, um, you know, four or five individuals, and also definitely having a COC lead would be there, would be helpful to be there as well. Um, but, you know, four or five individuals that can meet, um, you know, maybe quarterly, I don't know, however often you might need to meet um, to decide, okay, this is the process that we're doing in Houston or El Paso or Dallas or Fort Worth. This is the next step. This is kind of our next phase. Um, and so that they can give you the feedback or we'll give you those supports as well. This, the second tier of us um, getting help out to all the leads is, uh, as I was mentioned before, the online training. So not having to do the, to do the two day training can be immensely helpful due to the fact that um, doing a two day training is expensive. Um, you know, bringing people in to train and also the venues. Um, and then also in the two day training, we always didn't get a ton of people that were actually implementing the training after we spent all that time um, training them. So the online training is great. Um, it is a self paced online course. And um, as I mentioned, I uh, sent you guys a previous flyer out so that you can get the word out. And, um, and so the idea is that we do the online training or that you kind of lead um, a small group of individuals in your community through the online training. So probably um, four to eight individuals a quarter is what we're thinking. And then at the end of that, we find a way to do kind of a half day follow up. And so for those areas that are local, um, I'm going to try to get out there for those follow-ups. For those that are a little bit further out, such as you, Camille, um, mm -hmm. then we will get together an agenda and I'll be um, available via speakerphone. So um, so the idea is that instead of just having your community do a two-day training once a year, you know, we could do these online trainings, you know, consistently rolling out about once a quarter. And it won't be um, – a bunch of work for the leads. Um, it'll be mostly on uh, the individuals that are kind of uh, that are walking through the process and doing that, and then it'll be on my end once they complete the uh, the training and kind of getting back with them to, to see to make sure that they're linked in with um, the lead and with the community. So that's the second piece um, of that that um, that assistance that we're trying to give, and then the third piece. Um, is one that we have not really implemented in a community yet, um, and that is the SOAR support groups. And so this is kind of at the end, once we have the steering committee going and once we have the online trainings up and running, the idea is to have a support group that can meet as needed to um, staff the really um, the tough cases, the tough SOAR cases that are out there. So I know that the Austin area is looking at um, starting up a support group pretty quick, probably within the next month or so, um, so that they actually um, will have a group of individuals that can meet around um, uh, attached to kind of their mental health component. So they're looking at pulling in the, the local hospitals, the VA as well, as well as um, case managers that work with that mental health population. So, um, so really the vision is a, it's a time where, you know, um, a case manager that is struggling with a client, um, for one reason or another, maybe the client is, isn't cooperative or maybe they're just not being able to, to gain the information they need to, to move forward with the app. 
um, it's a time where that individual can come and kind of process or talk um, with other individuals um, about uh, that client and not just about the client, but about the case, you know, and kind of what is the next step and, and uh, where do we go from here and trying to help this specific client. So those are the three kind of help factors that we've kind of put out there. Um, and I would love to know how we can help you guys in the future as well. Um, we meaning THN, how can we give you guys assistance? So um, so feel free to email me and uh, Camille, if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Um, I think just the general support that you provide in, in general, um, and then of course the support that you provided, you know, regarding SOAR, I think it's invaluable. I, you know, I, I, it's great having you guys to lean on when, when, when I need it, when I need the assistance or or help or whatever it may be. So um, specific. Not nothing really comes to mind specifically right now, but okay. um, you guys have you guys have been great to El Paso, so and we would definitely appreciate that. Yeah, I mean we um I I loved El Paso last time I got to get out there. It's just you guys are so far away. <laughs> it's too far away, exactly. It's too far, and and it's you know sometimes I get frustrated sometimes because you know you're having like a case management yeah institute coming up. And, and I'd love to send people, but it's so, so far. So far, yeah. Well, I know. And one oh. thing, and one thing we're looking at doing um, that I'm looking at doing is really uh, doing monthly travel to different regions of Texas. And so, um, like last month, I kind of spent a lot of time up in the North Texas area. Um, I went mm -hmm. up to kind of the Wichita Falls area and to um, Frisco and, and Denton and the Dallas area and did some just visits up there. Um, and then the previous month I was down kind of in the Gulf Coast area around Houston um, making visits. And uh, the purpose of that is really a couple of different reasons. One is so, first of all, I think a majority of this work is done face-to-face. -face, so I enjoy getting out there and, and seeing how you guys are implementing the, the SOAR program within your community um, and giving feedback that I can. So I enjoy getting out there and seeing that happen. Um, the second piece is that, especially with um, with SSA, uh, meaning your local Social Security individuals, um, it it takes a concerted effort to kind of pull them in. And so I've been really trying to get out there and meet with them and let them know there's work going on in their community and they need to 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 step to the plate as well. So. So that is something I've been doing. Um, we've kind of divided that, divided the, I've divided the state up the regions and I'm looking at doing some travel in each region. So Camille, I'll definitely let you know when I can be, get back out there to El Paso again. Um, okay. But definitely we'll be hitting that San Angelo and that um, kind of the Midland Odessa area. So not too far away from El Paso. Right. So um, so when I get out there, I'll let you know, and that is something that as long as our grant allows, I will be doing that travel and rotating that around um, once a month. Okay. Um, besides really that – Really quick, I do have yeah. a question. Uh, on on member not too long – well, it's been a while, I think. Ivan had sent you an email regarding we don't have a contact at the Social Security Administration okay. contact yet. Okay. I can so, – so yeah, so yeah. What? Let me explain a little bit about that. Um, actually, that's that's good. That, thank you for reminding me. Um, so we actually have had a renewed interest with SSA just in the last, well, since the first of the year. And so last mm -hmm. month, I actually received a document that had all of the state um, SSA leads uh, for okay. SOAR. And so what I can do is I will, as soon as I'm done hanging up with this, I will send you that information with that contact. Um, okay. And these individuals have already been con been contacted um, by their directors and let them know that somebody will be contacting them around the SOAR effort and efforts that are going on around the state. Um, what I prefer to do is send an email um, kind of explaining the SOAR effort to this individual, and then I'll CC you on it so that you'll have that contact. Um, and there might be one or two in the El Paso area. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll I'll fashion an email pretty quick, and then I'll send that out, and that way you'll see that as well. 
Will that work? Okay. And That'll for, work. And for any of the other leads that have um, either don't know their contact or have lost contact, uh, you know, I can – That'll be part of my job um, is kind of uh, reinvigorating the the relationship we have with the local SSA office, as well as with VA. Um, lately, VA is stepping up to the plate, um, to the sore plate, as it were, and so we are looking at reengaging them as well. So we're excited about that. Um, so yeah, any other questions, Camille? Um, I think that's. That's all I have for right now. Great. Thank you for being the lone uh, participant this time. <laughs> but um, <laughs> You're very welcome. So I do have some upcoming events that are happening that I kind of want to share with you guys. Um, right now, uh, my focus for the next month at least will be um, – for or like next two months will be in the Temple, Colleen, um, Longview, and Texarkana area. Those are the new um, – uh, communities we're bringing on board, and so we're excited about those, especially the Temple and Colleen area, because there is such with uh, Fort Hood there, there is such a large um, uh, veteran population. So I'm actually going to be um, going out to Temple this week and meeting with them and SSA to figure out how we can pull individuals in, and then I'll be taking a trip up to North um, Texas again to the Longview, Texarkana area um to step to work through that process and getting sore um going in their area um as well as while i'm up in longview texas can i'll be doing some follow-up with dallas um and getting back around to see them and and figure out how i can help uh, get things going there um and and my next the next piece after that will be corpus christi um, we did a training down in corpus about four or five months ago, and I have not, not been back out there since, and um, there's not a lead out there, so I'm trying to do some work to develop a lead. So that's kind of where my uh, my attention lies at this given time, and um, if any of you guys have a question about your areas, um, please email me, and like I said, Camille, I'll email you um, that information as soon as I get done with this call. Okay, perfect. And really, that's all I got. Um, okay. So, Camille, thank you so much for being on the line. And um, for anybody else that is that will be listening to this via recording, um, just contact me if you have any questions. Um, I'm always either – well, my line is always – oh, my – phone is always working. I'm not always here, but um, feel free to um, to call me um, at this number and I'll make sure it's forwarded to my cell phone if I'm on the road. So you guys have a great day and I will uh, talk to you guys next month. Thank Bye. You. Bye, Camille. Bye.